if they want to. All right, five seconds. Talk, don't bother me. Yeah, look at me. Damn, I was going to say something. What is the people tell us later? And welcome to Let Them Talk. I'm Paul DiRienzo, and uh, my guest again is Priya Warcry. Welcome to Let Them Talk again, your third uh, appearance on the show. I wasn't counting. <laughs> yeah, well, we count. I keep track of it. Joni's away, enjoying a vacation, and she'll be back in a few days uh, for the next show. And in the meantime, you and I are going to discuss a very important issue to you. You've been telling me and keeping me posted on for a long time. We're going to talk about later on in the show about the, uh, the Copenhagen uh, Copenhagen uh, protests against the climate uh, conference that was happening there just a few few days ago, really. And I think today was the last day. Uh huh. Okay. Good. The and last can, nail in the coffin. <laughs> and you can update us on Copenhagen and uh, earlier. Uh, uh, but first, we're going to talk about a friend of yours, an associate and a friend who uh, had some very unfortunate happenstances, and now, fortunately, he's seen the light of day. And that's your friend, Free who spent a number of years in jail for alleged eco-terrorism. Could you tell us a little bit about the background of how Free wound up in jail, where he was held in jail, and uh, now that he's out, uh, how, what the prospects are? Uh, yeah, so um, Jeff was just, Jeffrey Lures was just released after almost 10 years, nine and a half years, um, for his act of uh, ecotage, um, yes, the that? FBI what? calls it ecoterrorism. But what he actually did was ecotage um, set fire to a couple of SUVs in a deserted car dealership where there was no threat to life of any kind, posed or intended, according to the expert testimony at his trial. So it was pretty clear that this it was just a property uh, crime, something like vandalism, you know. And yet he was treated like a terrorist, and it's just uh, absolutely absurd. And that was before 911, actually. So it's gotten a lot worse with the Patriot Act and um, the Green Scare, which we'll talk about later. But uh, with with Free, they they very much wanted to set an example and a precedent about how they were going to treat people who were motivated. Um, mm -hmm by their concern, their compassion, uh, their awareness about the ecological crisis. And uh, Free was an activist, you know, with no violent background, but as a background, as a, as a tree sitter, as a forest activist, uh, someone who had worked with groups like uh, Greenpeace or the Sierra Club, uh, one or the other, and, you know, various forms of indirect action. Um, and then, you know, like tree sitting and occupations and putting your body in the way of the Let's destruction a is, is, is a form of direct action. I, I want to ask you about a lot of that, terms uh, that many of our viewers might even not know what these are and what they relate to the story. You mentioned uh, oh, tree what? sitting. Oh, what's, tree sitting. <laughs> right. What's tree sitting? Well, um, you're right, because we're in Manhattan. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, well, out west, there's these amazing uh, old growth forests, um, ancient forests. There are trees that are very old, like 900 years old, something like that. And um, we want to protect what's left. Uh, <laughs> I'm on my phone, I'm sorry. Uh, that's all right. I don't know Ignore how to it. kill the fucking thing. Just <laughs> Ignore it. But um, unfortunately, the insanity uh, that predominates our you know, culture, unfortunately, these places are being logged and destroyed and clear cut rapidly. And what's left is just a pathetic remaining remnant of what once was. And, but what is is just really, uh, I mean, it, it's hard to describe something that prehistoric, this intact kind of, it's like nothing else you could ever manufacture. I mean, people compare it to like cathedrals and museums, but all those things are man-made creations. And this is like something organic of the earth. I mean, these, the, the oldest living things on earth. And mm -hmm. we're so lucky to have that. And so this sort of ignorant, mindless uh, destruction of that it was, was happening. And so people actually- And is happening. To, is happening, I'm, I'm afraid. And, and as um, uh, we had a program a few weeks ago about uh, rainforest woods, for example, being used as part of the boardwalks of the High right, Line and different right. places. Right, right. So it's pretty sick. Coney and you Island. know, yeah. Free was this kid from LA <laughs> who grew up with, you know, the pollution and asthma, you know. And sure. um, so after someone who'd been dedicated to preserving these forests, these uh, treasures, um, at one point in 2000, he and his co-defendant uh, Craig uh, Marshall Critter decided to, as an act of protest against America's fossil fuel consumption addiction, however you want to think of it, 
uh, you know, and its impacts on the environment, made a statement by setting a couple of SUVs on fire at a luxury car, car SUV dealership. Um, mm. And uh, so that was the action, but they were called eco-terrorists. And the reason I think it's worth talking about eco-terrorists is that that term, it's been explained mm -hmm. <laughs> by other people who do this for a living, is that uh, it, it was coined in the, in the timber industry PR, indi PR firms that mm -hmm. worked for the timber industry. Sure. And uh, unfortunately, they've taken on like a legal weight Mm -hmm. and, and, and the, the corporate media picks it up and, and so suddenly it's like a, a definition, a category used by the FBI. And so it's taken on this legitimacy that it doesn't really deserve when in fact it's used by law enforcement and the media for the same ends. That's to si silence and discredit and marginalize people who actually mm -hmm. never threatened any life. Well, uh, Priya Warcry, uh, thanks for joining us and I uh, want to hear more about the story and about Free. How? Uh, how long did he actually spend Unla in jail? Unlike the timber industry, by the way. How long did he spend in jail? Um, you know, so how can I leave this out? Free originally got a 23-year sentence. 23 <laughs> 20, years. Almost, almost. And, uh, and so his appeal was successful just last year, and that's why it's been reduced to uh, nine and a half. And um, even, even that, how though, long has he even that though, is really, really... Uh, extremely hurtful that they could do that to somebody with such sure. a life-centered ethic and commitment to preserving Did he serve the whole nine and a half years? How long was he in there? Yeah, so after the appeal, he was able to get out, you know, just mm, recently, and I guess I that's see. pretty significant, and it matters a lot. It's just that that was uh, absurd that the state got away with that, jail, but yeah. you see they've gotten away with quite a lot, especially with these terms, eco-terrorist mm. and enemy combatant. And any designation they give you that kind of strips you of basic constitutional protections and kind of the idea of a due process where you actually have your day in court or a fair hearing as opposed to being demonized. And, so Priya, uh, you know, we can take some calls. Our number is up on the screen and callers can call us at... Oh, uh, oh my God. Yeah, and there's a call coming in right now. So uh, we're going to take this call no, I'm and from see the what city. Happens. It's just that uh, I was lucky and able to see this forest. Okay. Uh, I would hello. like to go back. Hello, but... caller. Go ahead. Hi, how are you folks doing tonight? Hi. What's up? Uh, well, I have a bit of a predicament here. I've got my fist stuck up my ass, and uh, ah. I was wondering... Uh, God, you know, you know that is a predicament. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not sure what he said. But I know, but it was maybe just Maybe he has rude. his head up his ass. Is that <laughs> yeah, possible? Something. He was admitting <laughs> such a fact <laughs> might be true. Uh, so anyway, uh, well, we'll try a call or two more, so, because, you know, occasionally we do get a really good call, and uh, I don't want to uh, give well, those folks... Well, I heard Free so. went back out into the woods. I'm really yeah. happy about that. The very same yeah. forest that we tried to save, it's still there, thanks, yeah. thanks to him. And Uh-huh, um, the tree that you tried to save. What's the name of that tree? Does that well, that, that grove, that forest that grove. here, Fall Creek, quite an amazing... Um, you know, it's not like Lord of the t Rings where the trees can get up and run away. Mm -hmm. These trees can't run away from the bulldozers, so you have to do something. Right. And we call it taking direct action at the point of destruction, yeah. as opposed to some kind of indirect form of lobbying, which is important too, but really, you know, at some point, <laughs> uh -huh. you have to do that. And actually, what, that's where I met to Brad. Do what? Well, I was just going to say that's where I met Brad Will, too. And he was in a tree. Brad and Will, who yeah. we talked about on the show, yeah. who was killed in Mexico while he was filming a protest. An uprising, yeah. An uprising, yeah. yeah. But when I go back to the old growth forest. point blank while filming. Well, by a camera. sniper, you know, those things don't happen in the old growth forest, but they still slaughter the land. But Brad cared about that stuff really a lot. I met him while he was in a tree, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, and that was a happy time. In, in Oregon. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's where I met Free, too, and I'm really happy that he got out, and um, it, I'm sorry it took so long. Uh, it's really, you know, appalling at what the state can get away with.